this will be ready for you in just a couple of seconds. So this is the second phase of the AWS cloud formation script that we just let you uh, create auto scalable clusters in AWS uh, by just following the AWS cloud formation template. So uh, you will see a demonstration here uh, about this solution. And in this solution, you will get um, you will get a basic demonstration. And in the other events, we will make some challenges and you will just see the thousands of users, maybe tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of users will be active in the streaming. Uh, there will be also some exciting new features to let you have a cloud platform as a service that is custom to you in AWS or in other platforms. So this event is about uh, giving you the idea how to create a real-time streaming service in AWS. So uh, before starting, I just would like to say a couple of things. Just let me share my screen with you. So uh, this is just something spontaneous. Uh, just let me show you. OK, so uh, maybe some one guy here, Burak, is here since in our early days. This, this is very early days for the Ant Media. I think there is no user. There is no product. There is nothing in these days. And we are just working together in a single or two tables. So uh, today or tomorrow, my colleagues will be in IBC. And there will be a booth uh, in, the, in the IBC show. Uh, and right now, the company has tens of maybe thousands of users. And we are selling the product, some big names, Nokia, Ubisoft, Vodafone, and VC folks, and lots of other guys. So the point in here, when we launch, uh, to create a volumetric video streaming. And the first step is about uh, creating a real-time streaming service, which Ant Media is. So in IBC, we will just demonstrate our MVP of the volumetric video. And before that, I just would like to show you a very simple sample here. So in here, you just see a girl making some yoga. Uh, and there's a 360-degree video here. The interesting thing is that I can switch the camera. And I can see the viewpoint. You see that? I just see different viewpoints. And I will just, so the switching will be improved. And right now, I'm just seeing this girl in other perspective. So I can get come closer. And I see the girl in very close stuff. So this is the volumetric video streaming. It is, you can have the six degrees of freedom uh, in that stream. You can go uh, forward backward right left and you can just have the three degree of freedom by just navigating uh, the goal in here is that to just make this live uh, and when we start this stuff um, you can see that the volumetric video streaming will rule the video industry when it is available so this is one of the early sample that can be playable in the web browser as you see no need to have a special SDK, no need to VR. It will be playable in VR as well, but it is just playing in your web browser with a good quality and a low bitrate. So, uh, and for the Ant Media, just let me, let me proceed. Uh, so our mission is to be, to be the WordPress of the streaming. And we just created marketplace and affiliate programs that we mentioned later. So what is for you? Which means that we will on our way to be the WordPress of streaming, the streaming engine of the world. And you will be part of this journey with a win-win perspective. So that if you, you can create some kind of applications in the marketplace, you can sell it. And we will have the power of the volumetric video streaming that may change the everything in the video industry 
that some other guys also working. And uh, then with the power of these things, and we will just uh, get together and create something very big together if you want to be in this journey. So I think this is all from my side, and I'm just giving the word to Burak, Mohit, and yeah. This, Maria this would be the Maria. first. Yeah. Maria would be the first to take the word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Maria. Uh, I'm a product uh, marketing manager at Ant Media. I have been uh, to Ant Media's previous events before, but this one is actually my first one as um, a part of the team. So, yay to that. And uh, nice to meet you all. Um, yeah, just don't really want to uh, stop too much and talk about uh, our vision as well for a long time because it's already been 12 minutes. Better to start with a tutorial, I guess. So, yeah, just giving the word to guys. Thank you, Maria. Thank you so much. So, uh, hello all. Uh, good evening and good morning as well. So first of all, thank you for joining and being here. And thank you to Ozavi for his wonderful introduction. Uh, I see some new faces and some old men as well. So again, welcome, welcome you all. So uh, I'm Mohit, and today I will walk you through the process of you know how to create your own streaming service in five minutes. And believe me, once it is over, we all will be like uh, the Mozarts and the you know wizards of streaming service, and we can create and we'll be able to create a scaling streaming service with AMS that uh, can be set up in five minutes. And uh, like Maria, uh, this is my first time that I'm presenting something. So I hope you all will be with me in this. So again, thank you and welcome. So as Ozabi said that, uh, you know, our purpose is, is to democratize live streaming, you know, making streaming and scaling as mainstream as websites are today. And this implements and this implementation exactly does that. With this implementation, you'll be able to uh, create your own streaming service by using animated server in just five minutes. A service that you can launch in minutes, you know, and you can scale it to uh, to n number of broadcasts, number of viewers, and once you are done, you can stop it as you wish. So, uh, for some of you who has already used AMS and has and have deployed it in a cluster environment, you know that you know uh, you can do it in different ways. One of the ways is you know to uh, scale it manually. Then you can use AWS Cloud Formation and, and scale it in that way. Lately, we are using we are using Kubernetes to scale as well. And with each of these solution, you know, uh, the amount of manual work has come down significantly. But with this latest implementation, all you need to do is, you know, you just need to give the number of broadcast, number of viewers, and the magic will happen, and you will have your own ready streaming service. It's as easy as that. You know, so lately I've been watching Shark Tank on, on YouTube. It is a very famous uh, TV show, right? And on that, I hear that Sharks ask that, how will you scale this? That is one of the most important questions. So if anybody asks you, how will you, how will you scale your streaming service? The answer is end media server. Whenever you want to scale, you can use AMS to scale as big as you want. So having said that, let's start then. Uh, let me save my screen first. Let me know when you see it, guys. I, just a minute. Uh, I think it is, is it now? Oh, no, not yet. OK. Presenting now. Yeah, here we go. Entire screen done. Can you see now? Yeah, I hope you can see. Thank yes, you. yes, we can. Yes. OK, so uh, yeah. Uh, you know, yesterday, me, uh, Burak Abhi, and uh, Murad Abhi, we were making a dry run. And Burak Abhi said that, let's make it interesting. And that is a time when I, I forgot the URL of, URL of the landing page. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, but now I remember, and I have bookmarked it uh, as well. So this is the landing page, You know, a, a very simple landing page that you can uh, open on. Let me share this in chat as well. And as I said, you know, you just need the number of viewers and number of broadcasts, and then the magic will happen, right? 
So uh, I think our aim was to make 10,000 viewers to start with, right? So let me give it to 10,000 viewers. And we will start with one publisher. With this, you also have the option to you to use to get free subdomain as well, right? You know, um, creating subdomains, managing them is a very, very difficult and tedious task as well. But with this, you can get the option to even get your own SSL certificate and subdomains by end media server. So as I said, we gave the number of viewers, number of broadcast, and click on submit. Now, right now, what it does is that you know it creates uh, some certificates on AWS. So that we'll use those certificates for SSL purposes and to connect to the server as well. So uh, in the meanwhile, it gets done. If you have any questions uh, till now, or if there's anything that you would like to share, so you guys are most welcome. Maybe I can share something from my end. Yes. Actually, as 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 was mentioned, uh, we want to be the engine of, of the world, but not alone, not with transmedia team, but with everybody. We want to create an ecosystem in streaming world and make the world better all together. Okay, so we we consider all of you as our friends, not customers, not uh, users, but our friends and friends like drinking coffee with their friends. So we want to share a coffee link for you from a Star from Starbucks. Maybe you can fill the form and get a Starbucks gift from Ant Media and remember us while drinking your coffees. Okay. I hope maybe we can drink our coffees face to face one time. Yeah, definitely. I have shared the link. Oh, okay. So share it. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. I think it's almost done. We will have this certificate now, and then we will also see how many instances we need to uh, cater to this kind of use case. By the way, uh, if we have already some domain, I think we don't have to click this button, right? Okay. Yeah, right. We can use right. our own domain, but now we will demonstrate it without uh, without any preparation before. Yes, it's like a service. You don't have to, you know, uh, create anything on your end. You can just go click some buttons and then ready to use. I have just asked one question uh, in the chat box. Yes, please. Yes. Yeah, so the question, let me repeat the question. The question is that how are we calling the AWS services in the back end so that it is creating the cluster? Are we using some sort of Lambda functions, etc., or AWS CLI to call these operations in the end so that it is creating instances? Okay, thank you for this uh, question, Yash. In minutes, you will see uh, you will see a cloud formation form. I think we have it. Okay, let's go to yeah. wait. Answer the question. Thank you, Thank you Zabi. Yeah. So you know, we gave the number of uh, viewers, number of broadcasts, right? And it says that we will need ten C five ten X large instances and one instance of C five X large for the origin and edge. We will discuss what origin and edge is uh, in the in meanwhile, and we have a certificate as well. Right. So let me take a note of this certificate for future. So you know you can download this template or you can directly open it in open it on on cloud formation in AWS. So I will go ahead, click on open in CF. And we are on AWS, right? Here is the template. I will click on next. I will give it a name. Wizard stack. And yeah, I have made a key pair called wizard as well. So next. Next. Acknowledge. And click submit. Now let's know the, the time is 2050, right? Within five minutes, less than that, we will have this stack ready 
and we will have our own streaming service with AWS. So now, meanwhile, this gets done. Let me take you through the general structure of uh, clustering and how it works, right? So in cluster, uh, let me open the document. This is our documentation site. You can go to this and you can find all, all the documentation. So in cluster, basically, we have uh, three kind of uh, three things, uh, actually four things, to be honest. First is the MongoDB, which is the database, right? So MongoDB, it stores all the information about the nodes, the streams, bit rates, you know, which, uh, which node is having which stream and all those kind of things. Then we have two groups. First group is origin. Second group is edge, right? So when we publish the streams, we send those streams to the origin group. So origin group, it hosts all the streams. And when we play, we play it from the edge groups. Edge groups are basically used to play the streams. So we, we use origin for the uh, broadcasting and we and we use edge for the playback purposes, right? And then we have a and then we have a load balancer. So when we make a when we make a request to load to, to the LB, it sends the play request and uh, uh, publish request to the uh, respective servers, uh, be it origin and edge, right? Now about uh, the existing solutions, right? We have three different ways mainly in which uh, you can create a cluster that I specified earlier. First is, you know, we make it manually as we are here, right? In manual, we have to uh, make the database first, install the MongoDB, right? And then we install the origin and edge nodes, and then we have to make the load balancer, right? And it's all a very tedious work. There are lots of manual manual steps to be done, right? And uh, there can be uh, some errors at some steps. So it's a uh, kind of manual work, but uh, ultimately it gets you a, a it gets you a, a, a scalable environment, but it is more of a you know, product. It's not a kind of a service that you can click and use uh, in just one or two uh, steps. For the other way, after manual installations, we have uh, some ways to scale on AWS, which are more easier as compared to man manual one, which is cloud formation. So with the help of cloud formation, you can uh, also create a cluster which is scalable. With manual cluster, it is not scalable because you know to scale you need to add the add the instances manually. But with cloud formation, you can scale it automatically, right? So you give some CPU thresholds, and once that threshold is uh, passed, then it will launch new instances, and those instances will hold you will host your streams. But again, uh, this also has some manual steps to be done, right? Uh, you need to uh, give some uh, details like uh, uh, the uh, parameters. As for origin and edge, the CPU capacity, uh, the instance type, uh, and then uh, the ARNs, uh, the uh, MongoDB, the RTMP load balancer, as well as the VPC and subnet details as well. So it is also a, a kind of, uh, it, it also uh, takes some kind of manual work on, on our end as well. But uh, it, it is more easier as compared to the uh, manual installation. And then uh, right now, uh, as I said, you know, uh, we have Kubernetes, which is uh, very much in fashion nowadays and kubernetes is used is being used widely to uh, create auto scaling environments right and we have uh, what we call it as helm chart and so with the helm chart we can very easily deploy ams clusters on kubernetes uh, there are some uh, two uh, there are some four or five lines of codes that we need to run to install it with helm but still it requires some kind of manual work but in here as you saw we just needed to give the number of broadcast and number of viewers and then and then we had the Stack in preparation. So right now, I think it's been uh, three minutes and it is in progress. I think it may not take more than one minute, and then we will have the cluster. It's remote. Now, now AWS is creating some uh, assets for us, yeah. which are uh, which are uh, included in an Ant Media Server cluster, right? We we have yes. four items: Edge Group, Origin Group, Load Balancer, and MongoDB. I think AWS has created some of them. For example, Edge Group is ready, I think. Origin yeah. also, we have Load Balancer, as I saw. They have already created. Now we are waiting yeah. for AWS to- Yeah, it's done now. This oh, it so already- As you see, within yeah. four minutes, we have the setup ready. So that, we can create the auto-scaling structure in four minutes. As easy as that, we have a service. <laughs> so
So once we go to outputs, we can see the endpoints for the origin and edge, right? So what I will do is that I will open the origin endpoint. Wait, to, to sum up actually what, what we have done right now is that yes. we provide two inputs. One of them is the number of the streams we require and the number of the uh, viewers that we expect for our streaming service, right? There are two yeah, right. and we have some outputs after this process. Yes. One of them is a URL endpoint to publish a stream, WebRTC stream, and one endpoint to play the streams. And also we have one endpoint for the RTMP publishing. That's so. We have yep. two inputs and we have five outputs. I think two of them are for HTTP and it's the same with the HTTPS. So we can say that we have three outputs. That's all. You yep. provide inputs, wait five minutes. Then after that, you will have two endpoints to publish and play stream with a scaling environment. All right. Thank you for summarizing, Buragavi. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So we will uh, open the origin uh, endpoint, and let me just create the login credentials for this quickly. And here we are. We have a service a cluster running with any media server nodes and we have eight uh or uh, we have uh nine origin uh 10 uh, edge nodes and one origin node to cater to ten thousand viewers and one publisher right so yeah. now what i will do is that i will start a stream using our sample publish page right and then we will load this with ten thousand viewers and we will see if it can handle ten thousand viewers or not and really if it does, the then we will have the running service and having 10,000 viewers. So let me go to the sample public page first. And the URL of the sample public page is uh, very much straight one. So I will allow the microphone and camera access. Here I am. I will give it the name stream one. And click on start publishing. And we have the stream here. I can play it just fine. One, two. So it's all in real time. And I think now uh, my colleague uh, Murata uh, will load this with viewers of batches of 5,000, 5,000. So we will have 10,000 viewers ultimately. For this and then we can even auto scale after that. Then so it's your turn. Over, to what? Yeah, Let's over to you, Yeah, okay, it's coming right now. Moit, can you please open the dashboard? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay, I think mm -hmm. all have to say something, please. Yeah. yeah. So my, my question is, uh, I think uh, when first creating the cloud formation uh, template, we, uh, we we check the uh, DNS name and there is a DNS name appear there, Agile AMS and Media Cloud. So yes. Yeah. So sh shall we use that one or will, what is it for? Yeah, uh, we can access it on this as well. Uh, we just need to make some DNS records. I think we may have this in place. Murata, we must have made it already. So we can yeah. access uh, uh, it on this as well. Yeah, OK. Let me open this. So here we are. And as said, we can access it on the DNS name as well. So my, my question is this one. Do we need to make any other actions to forward this cloud name to the uh, running service in the backend, or it is done automatically? 
Yes. So right now, uh, once you create the uh, certificates, you can let us know this domain name and we will make the uh, entries on our end, right? And then you'll be able to access it. In the future, uh, we plan to make this uh, automation uh, to make this automate as well. So right now, mm -hmm. you can you can just let us know the uh, domain name and we can make the entry for you and then we can hand it over to you. And in the uh, future, we plan to make this automated as well. Okay. Yes, like, for, yeah. for, for now, maybe you can uh, send this uh, domain to Antimedia and we can create the uh, C name manually. But it is the first task in the version two of this page. Actually, we, we will make it fully automated. Okay. Okay. Now yes. we have already five thousand viewers. But, but by the way, Moit, maybe you can share the play link, and we we may involve this load test by creating some load on our browsers. Yes. Definitely, definitely. Let me get you all the link. <laughs> yeah. Let, let us play it on our browser. Let's see if it is working or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I will give you guys the link in the chat. There we are. Please feel free to open this and you'll be seeing me there as well. By the way, can you show us the load? Mohit? Yes. We have 5,000 and 5,005. I think five of us are. So I think now we can load it to, we can go to next step and we can make it 10K, right, Muradabi? Yeah. Also, Boyd, can you show us the cluster page? Uh, let, let's check the load on the server, server node yes. also. Oh, they are around 20, 25 band. Okay. Yes. The CPU, which is... Tim, I think you want to say something. Yeah, I just have a quick question. So, is it the same URL to access the edge cluster that is to the for the origin cluster? I'm a bit confused. Mm, yeah. or is Wait, it different? You please show us. Yes, that's a, a very good question, Tim. Thank you for that. So you know, uh, right now you can access the edge node on port four four on the origin on, on port four four three, and the edge nodes you can uh, access on port five four four three over HTTPS, oh. right? So. This also, one that you see show, show the output page in the AWS console. There, there yes. are different entries for publishing and play. Yeah. Yeah. There is open for origin and for edge. To publish stream, we are using the origin and to play, we are using edge. Yeah. So for origin, we use port four four three and for edge we are using port five four four three. Yeah. Right. So that's why when I published, I published it with port. 443, right? And yeah. when we play it, we are playing it on port 5443 as the link I shared in the chat. Let's check Mo the load, please. Mo Mr. Mo Mo can you start coming right now? Yes. Okay, now we are waiting. Okay, it is on the way right now. Yeah, I think it's coming now. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Murat, how do you load these uh, numbers? Uh, sorry, I didn't get your question. Uh, how do you give the load uh, as a viewer to, yeah. to the system? Yeah, we are using uh, our web artist test tool. So, uh, yeah, and I use my some best scripts. So that's it. Oh, so you are loading from uh, in AWS again, or how many machines you have on your end? Yes, Moit, can you please open AWS dashboard and EC2 ser services? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I created here uh, 10 C5 9 X large instances, and uh, I am using them. Okay. Here we have some instances that uh, which are created by AWS with the, our stack, platform stack, and there are some load instances. 
is somewhat is using these load load instances. Yeah. Every of the load instances. These are not created automatically, of course, uh, with the cloud formation group, but uh, we created them in advance to create load. We are close to ten thousand. And let me let me use this opportunity while I have it, because <laughs> uh, when I was checking out uh, the list of attendees, I've seen not only developers who wanted to check out this webinar, but uh, also quality assurance engineers, uh, some project uh, managers. So. I would uh, really appreciate to know where you guys from, like what is your uh, main area of expertise? Uh, that would be nice if you could share with us, like by saying it out loud or texting in chat, whatever is uh, fine with you. That would be awesome to know. Yeah, it would be good to know actually. By the way, we have reached 10,000 viewers. Muit, could you please show us the cluster page again? Let's check the load yes. on the server. Okay, yeah. they are around 55 and 60. Yes. Okay, then do we expect a new server? Or maybe yes. we, can, we can create another... Mr. Watt, can we create another 1,000? Okay. I think our cluster can handle more load. We have some margin, I think, there. Yeah, it is done. Now you sent another 1,000. OK, yes. now it's starting loading. What will happen with it? Because yes, we so created this for 10,000 viewers, but now we, we, load, we have loaded it more. Yes. So this is where this scaling happens, right? So we made it for 10,000 viewers, right? But we made an environment which can auto scale, right? So if we have more number of viewers, more number of load coming on the server, the server can auto scale as well. We have a scalable solution right now, a scalable streaming solution. So for example, uh, we have defined the CPU threshold to be 60%, right? So once the CPU threshold is uh, at 60%, the AWS uh, service will start to launch new instances to cater to more load, more incoming load, right? And that is right now happening as we are uh, going past 10,000 viewers. For example, if to show you that, I can go to auto scaling groups. And in this, we have the origin and edge group, right? In edge group, we have 10 nodes right now. And soon, uh, when the load gets more, when more number of viewers are, uh, are on the are on the edge nodes, it will start to generate new EC2 instances, and in that way, it can scale up. It it can scale up to meet any number of viewers that you want. So let's say if you plan to have ten thousand, but if you have twenty, uh, but if you have twelve, thirty thousand viewers, AWS can automatically scale and it can host you uh, uh, any number of viewers that you expect to host. Then. It means that while creating this streaming service, yes. we, we provide some initial numbers. But if we have more more people that we expect, more than we expect, then it still handle this. Yeah, definitely. As you can see uh, in the origin group, we can see that it decided to create a new instance, new EC2 instance, right? Because uh, we defined uh, the CPU threshold to be 60%. And as we can see that uh, on the cluster, we have nodes above 60%, right? So that's why now AWS auto scaling group is launching new nodes to cater to that additional load. And as we can see right now, uh, we have reached, I think, 11,000 already. Yeah, we are past 11, 11,003 11, people are watching this stream right now. So we can keep on scaling to cater to any, any number of viewers that, that we would like to see, right? And we have this very easily manageable streaming service. It is a service that you can manage, but it, all, but it also gives you the, you know, 
the control and access of product as well. So you can control and you can access the entire environment and you can use it as a service. And then once you are done, you can turn it off and then you can start to use it again. It's as easy as that. Okay, Moit. The, the next question is that, okay, well, we, we created a streaming service and we had an event, for example, with 10,000 or 11,000 people and it finishes, okay? If, well, what will happen? Should I keep all these instances on? No, you don't have to. So once you are done, you can go. To, so once you are done, we also specify the the lower limit as well, right? So once the CPU threshold reaches to a certain limit, a uh, certain lower limit, it will also start to scale down as well, right? So if you go to the auto scaling groups, uh, let me go back again here. And we can see that uh, we have set the desired capacity as 10, 12 and minimum capacity as 10, right? So now what we can do is that we can, uh, once our uh, once our event is over, we can just go to this, and we can go here, and we can edit the minimum capacity, and we can, and we, we can make it to zero, or we can make it to one, right? When we'll make it to zero, it will spin down all the instances, and in that way, the uh, cluster will be uh, will be down. And uh, when, once you don't have any load to it, and then again, when you want to uh, have a load, when you want to have viewers, you can again come back and you can increase the capacity to the required number. And then it can auto scale and it can scale down as well as per the load coming. Okay, if I want to delete everything, load yeah. monster, DB, all assets, how can I do that? If you want to delete everything, you can just come back to the uh, Cloud Formation page again, right? Here we have an option to delete. Once you will click this, it will start to roll back and it will delete all the resources. EC2 instances, security groups, load balancer, target groups, everything will be deleted as well. So so, so I don't I don't have to concern about if there is something in the AWS which causes some uh, cost, okay? It, it will delete everything. Yes, absolutely. It will delete everything and you will not have to incur any extra cost uh, apart from whatever you have streamed. So it's, as, as, so as, I, as we said, you know, it's a service. When you use it, you pay it. When you don't use it, you don't pay, pay for it. And it's very easy to set up. You, you give five minutes and in five minutes, you have a very controllable scaling service with which you can scale to a number of viewers and number of broadcasts and use it the way you want to use those and media server. So I have a question then. Uh, so what are the advantages of using this streaming service over some kind of cloud platform, may cloud platform as a service pro solutions? No, yes. So communication platform as a service, I'm sorry. Maybe everyone can answer this question in the, in, in here. Uh, Okay, so I have something I I noticed, but maybe everyone has something. Okay, yes. so I think uh, Murat is one of the guy that uh, creates too much work for this solution. Ready? Uh, let's let's Murat. Let's let's give an answer for for this one. Why did you create such a solution? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a good question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, because um, I think it is the most important thing. Um, how can I say? There is no maintenance problem uh, on the data center on the, I mean, data center site. So, and another one is the cost. Is it an answer? For your question i'm not sure so if you say that it is an answer then it's an answer <laughs> so is there anyone who would like to add anything yes i would like to add something uh, on top of what Mutatabi says that it is easy to handle first of first thing is that it is very easy to handle on cloud we do not have to make uh, uh, too much things manually to to automate this to 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 make a cluster and do doing auto scaling and for example, if uh, 
if one of our wood gets down in this cluster somehow and and it breaks or something happened then we do not have to add the new node manually um, it has that kind of architecture that it can scale up automatically and also uh, i just want to remind that we uh, after version 2.6.1 we have introduced high availability as well in ad media cluster so for example if one of the node goes down you will viewers will not lose this they uh, they will connect to other nodes their load will be shifted to other nodes in the cluster so i think that is also uh, one positive thing to 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 uh, deploy these kind of uh, architectures in a cloud instead of your local data centers so that is one that i see which is easy to manage without uh, uh, taking too much headache on our side that how to deploy these things uh, locally yeah okay thank you uh, is there anyone who would like to add anything oh i think umut is here and he's in amsterdam so uh, umut just show what is around you yeah actually you know what we are at the ibc right now uh, and this time we have stunt and and we are dealing with some issues we are going to solve it it is the tomorrow is will be the first day uh, but our booth is almost ready and you know if some of you guys will be here we are going to be hole 5 b14 and we are looking for you Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, Umut, yeah. and good luck for the uh, three upcoming days. So yeah, definitely. Come, come, come back with some good news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what we are gonna do, hopefully. And I just want to jump on the meeting and uh, let you know that we are here and we are on it, uh, and hopefully we will get some good results. Uh, we will meet some of our friends uh and uh, you know we can discuss in another webinar what we did and what we can do in the future just want to jump on the meeting and say hi to you yeah All thank you me. very much thank you for for joining it's it's very nice of you thank you please please wish a good luck to us okay yeah, we need, we need your support, guys. <laughs> have a nice day ahead thank you May, maybe if we return to the discussion board, maybe I can uh, tell my idea. Okay. As a software developer, sometimes when uh, I am using a third party application or software, I always wonder about the background, okay? What happened there? So if I use a streaming service, then there is, uh, very, there is very less place that I can move. I will have what what the service provides me okay so in such an environment everything is in under uh, my control so i can change everything because it is my own aws account i can see every assets there i can delete everything and whenever i want i can create it in five minutes i know that there is no problem for example if i have a I have a business like that. Maybe I have some events uh, in some days of the month. Okay, so I don't have to. Uh, I don't have to have a streaming service service for that. But I can create it by myself whenever I want. So it, the, this flexibility uh, seems to be good for me, actually. Okay. Thank you. I have a quick question, actually, because I know Marat mentioned about the cost. Do, do we have an estimated cost to run 10,000 viewers in this architecture for, like, say, an hour or something? Like, what what do we think it might cost to run it? Okay, can, I can answer this question, Tim. Uh, According to your uh, video quality and number of the viewers, you can calculate it uh, from Antmedia server cost calculator for now manually. But in the next version, may maybe we can provide estimated cost. Okay, but to estimate that cost, we need to get one more input. We need to know uh, how long does it take. 
an event okay and for now we don't want to get more input from the user to make it simple but if you provide this information also then uh, it, it is easy to calculate uh, the estimated cost maybe we can uh, also present it in the table by the way Mohit, uh, could you please yeah. show uh, how you can delete that i think it's yeah, time to delete sure. Yes, I think our, we have uh, we have had 10,000, 11,000 viewers. Now they are going, so we have to read this. <laughs> we we can sum we can sum up our uh, service. Okay, so here I'm on the cloud formation page, right? I will go and I will click on delete. Let me stop this. Okay, so here I am. I will click on delete and now it will start to read all the nodes all the instances all the resources load balancers uh, uh, the uh, vp and the vpcs the uh, nodes and, and and everything so when we don't need it we don't need to keep it running so yeah this this was about this and now if we have any other questions or anything we can discuss those right so I have just a small question. Maybe I have missed that in the starting. Uh, in in the starting of the template, it asks us that if we want to use uh, the existing domain SSL certificate. But what if we do not want to uh, use the uh, domain from Ant Media and we want to use our domain? Is there yes. any option to provide it in the form? Yeah, right. Exactly. You know. So if you don't want to use uh, the uh, Win by AMS, right? You can just uh, ignore this one. If you click on submit, now when you open open this in the cloud formation, mm -hmm. it will okay. ask you. Uh, and then when you go to next, right, it will ask you for the load balancer certificate. So here you can provide your uh, your own uh, your own domain uh, load balancer ARN, and then you can continue okay, with so, that. So it will be the uh, same general method that uh, is followed for the SSL certificate. Yeah. Yes, okay, you just you. you can just go to the certificate manager of AWS, create a certificate there, and use the ARN ARN over here. It's okay, very simple as well. Yeah. The, the, then, then yes, you can create your own streaming service in four minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think recently, Maria, if I'm not wrong, uh, uh, one of our uh, uh, uh community user was able to sell his product on the marketplace right so can you tell us something about that i mean that wasn't me for sure but i can tell you something about the marketplace 100 percent i even prepared some sort of a presentation so look at this beauty uh yeah i just wanted to show you a couple of slides and uh tell you about one of the products uh, that we're working on at the moment it's a uh, market marketplace and media's marketplace so what is it basically it's uh, a hub of applications and plugins and services i sent the link uh, to the chat on google meet and all of them their main goal is to extend the value of Ant Media Server to the users. So uh, to show you some examples of marketplace vendors that we have at the moment, it's a bit moving. You probably heard of it from the leaders, uh, leader of the fall, I believe, on uh, G2. Um, and uh, the other one, um, it's our product of the month is uh, direct IE. The first one um, helps you analyze your videos and live streams uh, in terms of analytics to increase video engagement and uh, retention. And the second one uh, lets you create computer vision models without any training or code or any experience whatsoever. So even if you're not a, a tech savvy like i am you still will be able to do this um and it's perfect for object recognition we've already tried it on a couple use cases like 
identifying people or vehicles or um, detect masks or any other safety measures. So yeah, uh, just a couple examples of those ads on. And uh, we also believe in the win-win game for everyone. So <laughs> how this marketplace can be beneficial to you it basically doesn't matter what group are you in. Are you an OnPG server user or are you a developer who working with uh, OnPG server? Or maybe your app or service is built on OnPG server. So either way, you will find a benefit for you either to elevate your streaming service uh, and get the most out of it um, or monetize your ideas and uh, promote yourself on our marketplace as well. And yeah, I just wanted to show you our team, a couple of faces. Uh, you can always contact us. Easy to remember, just like Ant Media Marketplace. Let me show it again. Easy to remember, you can just tap it on Google, the first page, you will be there. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, this is me. You can uh, always find me in uh, Ant Media's uh, LinkedIn post likes <laughs> or comments, uh, or just type Maria Artemonova on LinkedIn plus Ant Media to, yeah to contact me about any marketing related activities or marketplace inquiries, anything, <laughs> you know, pretty much. I'm uh, welcome to collaborate. So this is pretty much it, what I had you, for you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. So guys, if you have any questions, let us know. If you don't, then I think it's time for a selfie. So. I request you all to open your cameras, right, so that we can capture a photograph and we can see your faces as well, the good faces. <laughs> so I think some of us are still behind the camera. So guys, open it. Whoever opens the camera, they will get two coffees from us. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, don't don't forget to fill the coffee links. We will provide you Starbucks coffees for being with us today. Ah, no worries. Sometime maybe we can get you a camera in 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 the next meeting. Okay, so I think it's time we can take the we can capture the selfie. So. I will do it. So just a moment. Okay. So oh, let's, let's three, start. Okay. Yeah. So three, two, one. Say cheese. Cheese. Once more. I will take it once more. Because I was bad in the last one. Yeah. Once um, more. <laughs> thank you thank you guys thank you for joining uh, if you have any questions or anything please let us know and you can write us you can reach us on on our uh, discussion page on github so thank you for joining again and have a good evening have a good day have a good night because we all are from different parts of the country so thank you again and have a nice day thank you thank you, thank you. Goodbye.